Hey there, physics folks. Let's take a look at another short answer type FRQ. Um, this one, for your information, comes from AP Physics B. Uh, year is 2010. Form B, number one. If you're looking for scoring guidelines, that's what you want to look for. Uh, this is another 15-point uh, question. Uh, target time is about 11 minutes. We see we have a roller coaster. We've got some heights changing. We've got a loop-to-loop. -loop, so we're probably going to be looking at energy, centripetal force, and the like. Uh, let's see what they say. Small block of mass, uh, 1.15 kilograms, placed at point A at a height 2 meters above the bottom of the track, as shown in the figure. Uh, it is released from rest, that's important. It slides with negligible friction, so we're not going to have to worry about non-conservative work. Uh, around the inside of the loop of radius 0.6 meters and leaves the track at point C, a height of 0.5 meters above the bottom of the track. Now they've labeled, or they reference both the bottom of the track for both of these heights, so it goes from 2.0 meters up to 0.5 meters up. Um, though that's going to help you determine the change in height of that object and therefore the change in potential energy and the gain in kinetic energy. Uh, so the first thing we want to think about um, when they're talking about the speed of the block when it leaves at point C, we're probably going to talk about energy. And conservation of energy, because there is no um, friction, we can say that the energy at point A equals the energy at point C. Now you could say energy initial equals energy final, but labeling it with the locations is probably a good idea. Now what kind of energy does it have here at point A? Well we have MGH, okay, and that is where we start out, and that's going to equal one half MV squared at point C. Okay. Now I'm going to call point C's height zero. Uh, because then I can eliminate um, this height altogether and any potential energy that we might have at the end. Uh, and so my height here is going to have, this height that we're going to change is going to have to be the 2.0 minus the 0.5 or 1.5 meters. Um, when I do a uh, little canceling, everybody brought mass to the party, we see that uh, the familiar expression that comes out is V equals root 2GH. At this point, we're ready to plug and chug. Um, don't forget that the height change, the delta H, is equal to 2.0 meters minus 0 0.5 meters. So that equals uh, 1.5 meters is the change in height. So we can then say V is equal to root 2. I'm going to use 9.8. You can use 10 if you prefer times 1.5 meters and if you plug and chug and do the math you're going to get uh, 5.422 meters per second at point C. We're going to round that to two digits it looks like so we're going to say 5.4 meters per second at point C. Uh, if you were using G equals 10 it comes out to 5.5 meters per second. Okay that's the first part. Just two points for that one. Uh, on the figure below, draw and label the forces, not components, that act on the block when it is at the top of the loop at point B. Now, if we look at point B, the block is going to be, I'll just go ahead and draw it in. And we know that at point B, it's going to be touching the track. And we've got some forces uh, causing that to um, move in a circular path. Now, we know it's going in a circular motion, so it has to have a net force, and that net force uh, is going to be the centripetal force, but the forces that are on that block at that point um, are going to be, well obviously we're on Earth, so we're going to have the weight force, mg, and we're going to have the normal force, fn. Pen is running out of ink. Let's see. Okay, so that should be just the only two forces that are involved. Again, they're going to be looking for you to have both forces labeled. Please do not put, do not label this FC, okay? That is the net force. That net force, the centripetal force that causes the circular motion is uh, made up of the two uh, forces, the MG force and the FN force. They both point towards the center. They both contribute to FC. Um, it, you should you should not put FC in your, in your free body diagram alone, and you definitely should not do something like this where you have MG and FN. Okay. Remember, Fn and Mg make up the centripetal force, so this is no good. Okay. So what we're looking for is just the two forces pointing towards the center. All right. Let's see what's next. Okay. They are nice and give us the diagram again. 
and they want us to find the minimum speed the minimum speed and I'm going to change color so that we can hopefully have some more ink here minimum speed that it can have at point B when it's going around without losing contact with the track now when we say losing contact and again they're clever and they they tell us to talk about forces right before they ask us a question that might have to do with forces on the track when it loses contact with the track um, the force that goes away is going to be the normal force because normal forces are caused by surfaces and so when we lose contact with the track the normal force is going to equal zero at that point so we want to find the minimum speed or the speed at which the normal force just turns to zero so that it loses contact with the track so we're going to be talking about forces here um, so the first thing we're going to do is uh, again let's write out a sorry about the bell, a sum of all forces or a second law statement that says F equals MA and in this case because we're moving in a circle it's going to equal MV squared over R because it is of course a centripetal force. Now what are the forces when we're moving through a circle inside a loop? Uh, well we have the um, FN force for the force from the track typically. We have the plus MG force. Now why are these both pluses? Because they both point towards the center and if you remember circular motion by convention towards the center is the positive direction. And that's going to equal mv squared over r and that's our second law statement. Now let's not forget when it loses contact fn equals zero. So I'm just going to draw a line through this and say that's zero. Now I can simplify because this term is gone. Everybody brought mass to the party and we get yet another familiar um, um, expression for circular motion at the minimum speed going through a loop which is the square root of g times r. Uh, we're ready to plug and chug so v at the top the minimum speed is root g times r again I'm going to use 9.8 feel free to use 10 times r which was 0 0.6 meters and if you plug and chug do the math and rationalize this equation you get 2.425 meters per second and we're going to round that to 2.4 for significant digits. Looks like I'm this one losing ink as well. If you want to use 10 as your um, no, uh, value you might get a slightly different number. 2.4 is going to be fine. Okay uh, next up it says this is a, this is an interesting one this is a, a, a really uh, great problem because it's asking us for the minimum height above the bottom of the track at which the block can be released and still go around the loop without losing contact with the track okay um, let me just fold this up for you guys so we can see this problem still and it should be good okay so what we're looking for is this minimum height we're looking at whatever this height is now we know at two meters per second it's going to or two meters above it's going to go through the the track no problem however we want to find out what the minimum height is wherever this is it's going to get it through the track without going th without um, falling off now we could of course use our minimum speed uh, to work backwards and figure out what the height should be um, but there's probably a, a an easier way to do it now again we're going to be talking about energy so Let's talk about energy instead of from point A to point C, but point A to point B. Okay. Now, what are we talking about? Well, we know we start at rest, so we're going to have, um, first of all, I'm going to say energy with an exclamation point because it's important. Uh, we know we're going to start out at rest, so we're going to have MGH at A, and that's going to be our what we're going to call, maybe we'll call this the minimum height, actually, because it's not going to be at A. And we're going to say that that equals... Um, one half m v squared. Now, I know we did this before to find the edge of the track, find the the speed at the end of the track. Um, but we don't really know what's going on with this height compared to the height at the top of the track, and we don't know what the difference is because so we can't really s call this our zero point because we don't know what the minimum height is. So I'm going to say instead of uh, calling this our zero point, we're going to call the bottom of the track because they actually tell us from the bottom of the track is your zero point. And we're going to go ahead and say um, that it still has some potential energy here. So again, the height, its minimum height, whatever it is, the minimum height 
it's going to have some potential energy here. It, that's probably not accurate. It's probably going to be way up here. Uh, but it's also going to have some potential energy here, okay, down to the bottom of the track. So I'm going to add to this the um, potential m potential energy mgh at b because that is where it's going to be. Okay, so that's my energy statement. Now, interestingly. Um, we could, as I said, go back and use the minimum speed to find this and plug in and figure out what the height should be, but that's not the best way to do it. The best way to do it actually is to consider what's happening here uh, with just the energy conservation from the height to the B. And again, just to be clear, this height is probably going to be way up here because we're going to have to lose some energy to get to go through that loop. All right. Well, first we see everybody brought mass to the party. Okay, and now we can start making this a little bit simpler for us. And so I'm going to say, oh, there's our bell again. Um, G times the minimum H uh, is equal to one half. Now, V squared is an interesting term, but let's not forget that when we go through a loop, um, V squared, we know there's another expression for V squared because we know that if it just loses contact, we know that mg equals mv squared over r, which is what we used in this last expression to figure out the minimum speed. And again, everybody brought mass to the party. And we see that v squared, I'm going to leave it squared this time for obvious reasons, uh, equals uh, g times r. So I'm going to say instead of v squared, I'm going to say g times r. And you can see there's a g here, there's a g here. Oh, and lo and behold, this is a g as well, plus g. And what is hb? What is the height at b? Well, it's 2 times the radius. OK. Now, interestingly, we don't often say this, but everybody brought g to the party. And you can see now we have an expression for the minimum height is just equal to 2r plus 1 half r, which is 5 halves times r. And if we plug and chug, we get 5 halves times 0 0.6 meters of radius. And we end up with exactly 1.5 meters is our minimum height. OK. It's a good little problem. Um, the video obviously took longer than 11 minutes, but that's our target time. 15 points per question uh, for this particular question. And remember, it is AP Physics B, Form B, 2010, question number one. See you next time.